Hi, this is Chris. Welcome to Winemaker TV. Today, we'll be doing a part two of a strawberry banana wine. So stay tuned. Today is part two of a three-step process of making the strawberry banana wine. Step one, if you missed it, there'll be a card coming down. Step one was to make the wine. Step two, what we're doing today, we're going to rack it to a secondary to get it off the fruit and the leaves. The leaves are the, the, uh, the yeast and all the gunk that settles to the bottom. That's called the leaves. And we're just going to get it off the fruit and get it off that leaves. So sometimes that might give it off flavors if you uh, wait too long on this part, this step. So we want to go ahead, as soon as the fermentation's over, or pretty, pretty soon after, we're going to rack this to a secondary. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's go over what you'll need. Of course, you're going to need strawberry banana wine. This won't be possible without that. And I, I ran out of cheesecloth, so I didn't, wasn't able to get all of the fruit into a cheesecloth so you'll need a little strainer like this with a dip we're going to dip it out and, and I got a little bucket right here before I uh, uh, put my stuff for my compost pile I'm going to dip it and put it in that bucket going to need a container to put it and you're going to need a racking cane or whoop, whoop, you're going to need a racking cane or an auto siphon to get it from source to destination so let's get started First part, I, like I said, I did get some of it in the in the uh, cheese cloth. So first step, I'm gonna try to, since that's the easiest, gonna get all this out. And also, we're gonna be racking this to the secondary to get it off this fruit, and it's gonna clear. This is gonna take a little bit time to clear because that banana makes it real cloudy. And don't worry if this stuff looks nasty. It's been floating for a couple of weeks now. Kind of mushy, all its color, all its color is faded, and it, like I say, it gets, it's waterlogged. So, uh, this is what the strainer comes in handy for, with a handle too. So we're just gonna try to strain as much as this gunk. Like I said, that banana just leaves a little bit of sludge behind. So we're just going to try to get as much as that as possible. And if it don't, when it gets to their secondary, it'll just settle to the bottom and we might have to rack it to a third. Let's hope not, but I'm going to continue doing this and then we'll be right back. All right, that's done with part step one, which is getting the main bulk of that stuff out of it. Now time for part two. So take your source which is going to be your glass fermenter and we're going to put it down at our feet you want your source and then your destination is going to be lower than your source let gravity help you out a little bit even though this siphon will do it it works better and if you want to get yourself a little taste while you're here it may not be the best tasting yet because it needs to age and clear out even though we are racking this this could uh, take a few months to clear out so that's no that's let you know when it'd be ready to bottle you'll start seeing it slowly clear out towards the bottom and then when it's done when it's clear and give it a little taste and if it tastes all right it's ready to bottle so this could take a little time, especially with this banana. This banana likes to get cloudy, so it might take up to a year for this stuff to uh, settle out and clear. But hey, that's what patience is for. That's the hardest part of this wine making sometimes is being patient and let nature take its course. It's flowing good. Once you get it a couple of pumps, once you get that couple of pumps going, it does all the work by itself. And sometimes you want to, when it gets toward the bottom, tilt it a little bit. And if you want to just set something up under it right here, that's good to go. Or you can just set the, the top. And if you fill up your uh, secondary and it doesn't come all the way to the top, what you can do is... Uh, sanitize some 
marbles and put down into it and that'll raise displace a lot of that and raise uh, the fluid level up to the top so you won't get any air at this point oxygen will turn this into vinegar so you do not want to you want to minimize the exposure to oxygen as much as possible you don't want it to oxidize and I like to just toss all this back in here in your in your primary bucket like I said this is still scrumpy looking it needs to age and clear but that is the finished product so we'll be right back to wrap things up. And that's step two of a strawberry banana wine. We racked that to its secondary. And like I said, it's still real cloudy. Like I said, banana gets cloudy. It's going to take the time to... But you'll see all the settlement start going down to the bottom with some age to it. So we're going to put an airlock on that. And I don't have it with me right now. So make sure you put an airlock on it. So we want to minimize the oxygen that gets to that wine right now. This oxygen gets to that wine, it oxidizes, turns into vinegar. And if you want vinegar, that's how you do it, but I want my banana strawberry wine. So if you like what you see here, and you want to help support this channel, there's the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Even if you don't need any of that uh, equipment that's in that description, if you click any of those links and go about your normal Amazon shopping, you'll help support this channel by uh, You'll help support this channel and help me to go buy ingredients and equipment. So this is Chris with Winemaker TV. That's all there is today.